Thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in to the Shelly Roy Show. I am your host, Shelly Roy, and we have an amazing show for you guys tonight. I pray that you guys are continuing to be safe and sanitized. I pray that you guys are having a great week so far. Before I start the show, I'd like to start off with thanking our sponsors. The Shelly Roy Show is sponsored by Built on Survival Skills Apparel. We're also sponsored by Liquid Lipo, where you could lose up to a pound a day. Also, for tips on how to become a boss, be sure to check out ShellyBossUp.com. I also want to thank my makeup artist, Miss Amber Singletary, my photographer, Mr. Steven Tucker. So you guys stay tuned. Don't go anywhere because up next we have Miss Brandy Forte, Miss Nathan Jarrell, and Miss Tracy Rucard. You guys stay tuned after the break. <laughs> Do you or anyone you know have a business or a brand you want to promote? Would you like to be a guest or be a part of our studio audience? If so, contact us at theshellyroyshow at gmail.com or contact us on Instagram at theshellyroyshow. Can't wait to hear from you guys. Welcome back to the Shelly Roy Show. I am your host, Shelly Roy, and my first guest is the author of her new recently published book, Stronger. Help me welcome Miss Brandy Forte. Welcome, Brandy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Absolutely. It feels so good to be here. We didn't dodge hurricanes and tornadoes Listen, today. Listen, huh? I'm telling you, I'm so glad that you made it safe. I'm glad all of you guys made it safe because it, it wasn't looking promising. So we made it for yeah, sure. Thank yeah. God we definitely made it. You look so pretty. Thank you. Really I was, pretty. I was like, you know. Miss Roy is always fly. Thank you. Let me get my squad together. Well, you matching my fly because we got the white, the red lip. Yes. So yes. We, we matching today. Yes. For thank sure. You so, much. so tell us who is Brandy Forte and what's your story? Yes. So Brandy Forte is a mompreneur. She is a author of four books. Yes. She is the author of Drama Girl, a Diary of a Sister Poet, mm. Half Chicken, Half Scholar, Free, and then the most recent book which is stronger, stronger, which you would stronger took me about five years to write. Um, wow. Okay. So perfect segue into stronger. So yes. before we get into stronger, because I know you've published several books. Yes. So if you can give us like a quick overview of each of them so okay. that we can hi highlight those really quickly. Absolutely. So I'm a Howard grad, shout out to Howard University, mm -hmm. HU. Yes. Um, which was definitely a blueprint for my writing career. I have a degree in journalism. Um, my first book, which was Drama Girl, I wrote that at 22 years old. So okay. it's, it's just a Give memoir. Give us a snippet about what that's about. It's a memoir. Um, it is my life being captured in prose and verses. It's a poetry book and memoir when wow. I work for the Source magazine. Okay. So it's just my outlook, just a coming of age kind of poetry book, memoir, back in the days when I was backpacking with Raheem Devon and yeah. W.E. Felton and when life was different on U Street. Then you have um, Half Chicken, Half Scholar, which was my dad back writing a chick 
lit kind of urban book uh-huh. about okay. me and my friends without spilling all the beans. Gotcha. And it really, it was a test like, how can I write a novel? And so I was learning, but then it was like life hit. Like real life hit. Yeah. Something that college doesn't prepare you for. Mm -hmm. You know, love, heartbreak, um, mental health, wounded, and I captured that essence and free. So free is based on a true story. It's based on my life story. Um, And then I started experiencing real life. You know, I hit my thirties. Yeah. (laughs) Started seeing some stuff. (laughs) Started meeting some men. But everything you described so far is relatable. Absolutely. So I want everybody to be able to go out and pick up the book and check it out. So yes. you hit your 30s, you start experiencing I, things. I hit my 30s. Um, I was working for President Obama as a fellow. I was a single mom. I had dreams, aspirations, and, you know, Stronger captures um, my character. Her name is Dream Angelo. Okay. Like my Angelo. Yeah, she's yeah. a writer. She, a poet, yeah. Yeah, she's a poet. Um, but she loves hard and she loves deeply and she tries to repair broken men and that's what Mm. you see in Stronger and so she runs into this uptown brother named Kenya Harris. So this is non-fiction or fiction? This is fiction Fiction. based on a true story. Basically we just changed names. With a little spin to it. Okay. We just changed names. I love it. Yeah so Stronger captures love, loss, trauma and being resilient and really that is seven years of my life. I love that because, you know, as you go through the journey of, you know, having life's experiences and then having the trials and tribulations of those. So being able to document that, it sounds like a masterpiece. You know what I mean? Because I think so. Where you are now, it didn't take you to get there overnight. So it took preparation. It took some bumps along the way. So the fact that you were able to put your time into it. I applaud you on that. Thank you. And what I really like about Stronger for just those who want to be entrepreneurs, I literally give you the blueprint to be an entrepreneur. I love From starting my business with $500 to not being, um, getting any bank loans to, you know, people looking down at you like you crazy. You know, when you have a dream and it hits, like you have that aha moment Mm -hmm. and people look at you like you're crazy, Mm -hmm. but well, it's not their vision. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And so I delve into how you start your business with nothing, how you build an empire, how you raise, you know, sons on your own and, and take them from being a prince to a king. Yeah. I love that. And you know what I love about your story and everything that you're doing in terms of pouring into our people and our community, it's in alignment with what the platform is about. You know what I mean? About motivating, inspiring, and uplifting. Yes. And I can't wait. I'm going to crawl up in the bed <laughs> and just start reading. Yes. It sounds truly like an amazing, Thank like you. really, really good read. Thank you. So. This is really a good thing, and I'm glad that you're here to promote it, and I think everybody needs to get it. And so we'll talk a little bit about where people can go to get your book later on. Yes. But because you're a multipreneur and a mompreneur, you're multifaceted, I also wanted to talk a little bit about your adult vocational school. Talk to me a little bit about that. So we have Amala Lives Institute. This is our sixth year. Um, We've been approved by the Higher Education License Insure Commission of D.C. Okay. We're an adult vocational school. So Washington Post deemed us as a school of a second chance. We specialize in culinary arts, hospitality, and then this fall we're um, unveiling our Small Business Entrepreneurship Academy. Gotcha. So many of our students are 18 to, say, 65. They're returning citizens. Oh, wow. Okay. They are single parents. They are people who've lost their way, who are trying to find their way. They're career changers. And we have a few that are high school graduates. Uh, We just graduated a class of 20 um, two weeks ago. Uh, We did it on Zoom because of the pandemic. Give it up for her, guys. That's amazing. Really? You know why? Because your traditional school isn't for everybody. So I like the fact that you have an adult vocational school that is drawn, basically, like you said, on second chances. You know what I mean? And then... There's a wide range there. 
And so they're only Which is 12. Important. Yeah. yeah, they're only 12 uh, vocational schools in the district um, owned by women. I'm the youngest. I'm the 12th. Yes. Um, so it's it's a great feeling to Black excellence. I yeah, love it. to I come love into it. the building and like, this is really mine. Absolutely, you know? I love that. So, how does the enrollment work? How do you go about getting into your vocational school? Yes. What are the requirements? So the requirement is that you just got to be driven. You got to be ready. Um, you got to be 18 and over. It doesn't matter if you're a D.C. resident, Maryland resident, Virginia resident. D.C. has more of the funding source. So, you know, if you are a D.C. resident, there are resources Programs. out there that will pay mm -hmm. for your tuition. Um, but you can go online to www.amalalivesinstitute.org. Amala is an Arabic word. It means hope. I was going to ask you that. And, yeah, yes. it means hope. And, um Basically, that's the principle. You know, we want to give hope. We want to feed hope. We want hope to be driven in every person's life that we touched. And a lot of people are like, Brandy, you know, you're not a chef. You're not, <laughs> you're not in hospitality. Even my daughter said, how you going to have a school? You're not any of those. I said, but I'm a brain. But you're driven. I'm a you brain. Have, yeah, yeah. And so at the end of the day, a lot of times it's about bringing what people need, meeting the needs yep. of where we're at. So I love that. So you talked a little bit about the requirement being driven. Mm -hmm. So you know that adults, you know, they're in different spaces Absolutely. of their life. So is there room for someone who may want to come to your vocational school and join your curriculum who may not be as driven? But so, you know, sometimes I think just the stars align. Yeah. Like we have um, orientation on the 8th. That's our next orientation. And we're located at 80 M Street Southeast. So we're in Navy Yard. We're right up the street from the baseball stadium. Oh, cool. Okay. It seems as though when they come to us, they are like tired and They've bratty. They've been through it. Got it. And so my staff and I were, you know, African-American staff. We just give that vibration you can either come to us now or come to us later. Yeah. You know, um, we interview them to make sure that that's a good fit. Yeah. Because there's other institutions that, you know, may be the institution for them. But generally, I'd say 99.9% .9 when they come, they when they ready. see us, whether it's virtual or in person, they're like. They're ready. Uh-huh. That's Makes it. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. I love that. And then we tell them our story. I think that's what I learned when I was a fellow for President Obama to tell your story, mm -hmm. you know, to not hide where you come from. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. People have to be able to relate, to be able to tap in. Yeah. So I think it's important that you tell your story. Yes. So, no, that's amazing. So one more time, tell everybody what the website is and where yes. they can go. They can go to amalalivesinstitute.org. We're also on Facebook under Amala Lives Institute. Um, I do want to shout out my nonprofit. I have a nonprofit, which is Amala Lives. Um, and you can go to amalalives.org. And that is, my nonprofit is really focused on youth okay. and family services. We're known for performing arts, music, literature, and just using the arts as a healer um, in public housing in D.C. I love that. So many different options. So. Going back into the book here. Yes. Stronger. Yes. You guys see this? <laughs> stronger, wiser. Talk to me a little bit more about stronger. Yes. Um, when someone reads the book, what are you looking for in terms of the takeaway? What is the reader's takeaway from this book when they read the book? You know, that book, I became vulnerable. So when I wrote the book, you know, I had in mind, you know, uh, a romance novel when I mm -hmm. first started writing it I want to say in 2015 it was a romance novel and it was just gonna be cute and the brothers was gonna be fine and I just had this whole thing of what it was gonna be right, right? I'm thinking of Morris Chestnut, Gabrielle yes. Union, something that could be converted into a film mm -hmm. um, then my husband was murdered oh sorry to hear that yes my husband was murdered when I was wrapping up the book and then the whole premise changed. of the book changed of course. and I heard God say write your story mm -hmm. and I was like oh my gosh that's gonna be too much tea that's gonna be 
too much because you know a lot of times when people see you they judge you right mm -hmm. they see you they think you know oh like Shelly Rose she's always fly she's beautiful she don't go through nothing you know people would see oh, me I and judge did. yeah <laughs> people would see me and judge me yeah but they didn't know who I was married to they didn't know the things Your that struggles. I would have to deal with the struggles dealing with fidelity infidelity um dealing with betrayal dealing with substance abuse and mental health black men black men y'all gotta get help Yes, y'all gotta absolutely. get help, and so I deal with the family secrets. I deal with substance abuse. Mm. I deal with mental health. I deal with you're knocking on everybody's door. Yes, you're absolutely. Yeah, you know what it means to you know have flashbacks when mm. you when you've had trauma, um, especially if you don't deal with the trauma yes. and get the trauma treated. Yes, and so I definitely you know bring those elements, and you know a lot of times I think with our relationships as African Americans, mm -hmm. you know, we're either painting it like real heavy, it's real just, you know, um, loving hip hop ish, mm -hmm. it's just toxic, or it's just perfect, right? Stronger is a mixture it's of a mixture. it. Because that's real yeah. life, though. Uh -huh. you it have is. The ups and the downs, the mm -hmm. good and the bad. So yeah. and with, there is that mixture. And with those characters, because, you know, again, a lot of times when you're in a relationship, you are meeting a person's representative. <laughs> that you, part. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't really know. You know what that I'm saying? That part. You know? Talk about it. People need to do intakes. Y'all need to do inventories out there. Now that's real, y'all. Intake, yeah. background, yes. talk yes. for sure. Because a lot of times you got curses, family curses. Mm. You got things that... That your grandfather, the your great grandfather, that yeah. carry over into uh -huh. the next relationship. And then you got, you know, as sisters, we walk into stuff, and you may think, oh, that person is fine, or that person is gonna make a beautiful baby, and, and things are gonna be great. And yeah, you gotta dig deep. You can't you dig the exterior. Yeah. And sometimes you outgrow people. Mm -hmm. And so you see, you don't just see the relationship between man and woman. You see. Dream Angelo outgrowing family. You see her outgrowing friends. You see her surpassing levels and how she is, like, really dealing with it. And so my character is vulnerable. I cannot wait mm -hmm. to read this. I and can't. it's a thick book. It's intimidating. But once you pour in it, you're going to be nosy. you probably hit me up and be like, nah. Oh, no. I'm definitely <laughs> going to be hitting you up for sure. I'm, I'm definitely going to get into it for sure yes. when I get a chance. Um but before we close out, um, it's important to me to understand what advice would you have for an aspiring writer since Ooh. you've done so well? My advice is to stay in your lane. Meaning? S stay in your lane, meaning create your own rhythm. Okay. A lot of times as writers, you want to emulate. You know, when I started writing, it was, it was Sister Soldier. It was... Um, you know, Jerome Dickey was those writers, mm -hmm. right? And then you would try to, like, mimic, mimic them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you're a writer, you let that stuff come. Right. You need to be well-researched. Mm -hmm. So you need to read the type of genres that you're interested in. You can't just wake up. Workshopping is great. We're in a pandemic. People are doing workshops online, study your craft, um, go to school or take courses. Um and then set timelines and deadlines. I'm real, real big on yeah, that. I Extremely love that. big. Um, I do want to say something, though, about Stronger that I cannot forget, that I always forget with the media. Okay. So there is a film called Miss Virginia. Mm -hmm. It's on Netflix. Okay. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's based, it's based on a, it's a real DC story. Okay. And there is a character in Miss Virginia. You got to watch it. Watch it. Watch okay. it. Um, you got to give it to us yes, real quick. Yes. Yes. There's a character named Bones. That character, Bones, is a real-life character. Okay. And that was my husband. And so Stronger Got it. is okay. a segue. Segue into, okay. Miss Virginia. Perfect. Okay. Yes. So before we close out, before you give us your social media handles, tell everybody where they can purchase Stronger. Yes. And then what your social media handles are. So Stronger can be purchased on Amazon. Um, Stronger locally can be purchased at Howard University Bookstore, oh, Barnes & Noble, yay. Mahogany Books in Southeast, as well as The Harbor. Um, but you can't go wrong with Amazon or Amazon Prime. Perfect. And also BrandyForte.com.
perfect. And your social media handles. Yes. Facebook, author Brandy Forte. Instagram, author Brandy Forte, entrepreneur. And Brandy's Empire on Instagram as well. I love it. Thank you Thank so you. much for joining us. Thank you so much. It has been such a pleasure. Very informative. You guys be sure to check out Stronger on Amazon. Absolutely. We're going to go to a quick break Thank and we'll you. be right back. Do you or anyone you know have a business or a brand you want to promote? Would you like to be a guest or be a part of our studio audience? If so, contact us at theshellyroyshow at gmail.com or contact us on Instagram at theshellyroyshow. Can't wait to hear from you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back, guys, to The Shelly Roy Show. I am your host, Shelly Roy, and my next guest is an author as well, here to promote his new book, Beyond Poetry. You guys, help me welcome Mr. Nathan Jarrell. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Such an honor. Um, so let's get into it. Tell everybody who Nathan Jarrell is and what's your story. Nathan Jarrell is an author. Yes. Is a poet. So back is up a, for a second. Okay. How does that feel? Because I know when I published mm -hmm. my first book, just to say that I'm an author and I have that behind my name was just an amazing feeling. So how does that feel? It feels tremendous. Uh, yeah. I'm a part of literary history. Yeah. You know, anytime you write a book, you put something like that into the universe. Absolutely. You've left something behind for someone to read. That so. part. Down. I'm very happy about that. That part. So I didn't mean to cut you off. So no, you cool. are an author. You're a poet. I want to hear it. But I just had to take you back just to share what that experience was like. No, that's cool. I'm an author, poet, entrepreneur, yes. writer, and blogger. I love that. Okay, you. so you're a blogger too. Um, so tell me Beyond Poetry. Yes. The title. I know what it sounds like to me, but what does that mean? The book is more than just poetry or that's correct what the, is the book about the book is actually a, a combination of poetry mm -hmm. and fiction uh, storytelling okay and that's the uh hence the reason for the title beyond poetry because the book is more than just poetry there's so much material in the book than just poetry gotcha so more life experiences true life experiences or so this actually is a is a book of fiction um but just because a story is fiction doesn't mean you don't have to tell the truth absolutely yeah, and expand it a little bit. I agree with that. Yes. Um, so in Beyond Poetry, who would you say is your most favorite character and why? I would say that um, my most favorite character is Junior. Obviously, he's a 14-year-old boy who is a black teenager that's living in the inner city that is trying to uh, use poetry, which is his God-given talent, to mm -hmm. try to liberate himself from the inner city. Yeah. Um, and... You know, like most kids that grow up in the inner city, they usually, they typically, you know, they might have sports entertainment or acting, singing. You know, well, he's not talented in that way. Right. His talent is as a writer. Um, so even though this is a book that's totally fiction, it reminds me of myself when I was growing up as a teenager. I love that. 
And that's true because not oftentimes everyone has those same outlets. So Correct. you have to be able to attach yourself to something that's Correct. relatable yes. where you could dream, imagine. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Hence the, the storytelling. Exactly. So I, I definitely appreciate that. Um, what would you say is some of your success habits as it relates to when you were writing the books? I would say that uh, my success habits is just, just total grind mode. Um, once I get locked into a goal I have, my goal was to finish Beyond Poetry, I just, I, I don't stop. I just, every day, I, you know, I get up, it's one of the first things I do in the morning and, you know, prior to going to bed, but I just, I do not stop. I just I totally that. stick to my goal until it's completed. How long did it take you to write the book? So the book took me about, I would say about two years. Okay. Yeah, about two years or so. So did you have a timeline in mind in terms of when you wanted to actually finish the product and have it out or? Not necessarily. Um, okay. I, I, I try to, even though it is good to have timelines and things like that, but I also try to not put those kind of restrictions on myself yeah. just so that I have the, the, the space, the peace and the energy to just create what I need. And since this is going to be a series as well, um, oh, nice. that's why it took me as long as it, as it has. No, I agree. I mean, with anything, uh, whether it's short films, whether it's writing scripts or books, um, and even I learned that in publishing my book, when you first write it, it may feel like your masterpiece. Yeah. But when you go back and edit it, you find things that you may need to add. Yes. So yes. I understand not rushing it. You know what I mean? Because yes. you definitely want to put put out that good, solid product exactly. and masterpiece. Exactly. So I completely understand that. Um, and also, in terms of what you said, this is what I normally tell people who ask me questions about writing. Yes. Or what did I do or what my process was in terms of writing a book. I basically told them the same thing you just said. You have to set aside time. Yes. A, a, set, a, a set time yes. as to when you want to start writing. You have to be consistent. Yep. And then you have to get in a space. That's right. A space mentally and a space Wherever that is, whether it's in your office, whether it's, you know, out in the park, you just have to be consistent with it and just write. That's very true. So I love the fact that you said that. So what do you think that you learn most about yourself in writing this book? I think I learned about myself um, that when I'm totally focused on something and disciplined, I can do anything. That's the main, that's the main thing. And that's one of the uh, main narratives inside the book is that. You know, we may not all be talented the same, but if we yes. utilize our talents, we utilize our gifts um, efficiently, we can get things done. So that was the big takeaway for me when I completed this book. I agree. I felt the same way. I think the biggest motivation and the most rewarding feeling I felt after I published my book was the fact that I actually did it. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, That's it. I've never been a procrastinator, but... Like we're talking about, when you're writing a book, you want it to be perfect. Yep. You want to take the reader on a journey. You want it to yes. be relatable. So there's so many different components and elements that go into yes. being great at putting out this product. Yes. So I think that was like a defining moment for me. Like I remember when I first published it, I was just like, Mom, we did it. Yep. You know That's what I it. mean? It's just completing it. That's it. And I'm so glad you said that because what what with writers, with, when you're a writer, when you're writing a book or something like that nature, mm -hmm. you know, you really are facing yourself because while you're putting this product together, mm -hmm. you're facing these demons that are inside of you that are saying, yes. you know, you never, you're never going to finish this thing. Oh, it's not going to be good. Nobody's going to read that. Nobody's going to buy it. And you have to overcome those things and say, nope, that's not true. I'm going to keep plugging away anyway. So to get to, you know, to get through that and then you get to the very last part of the book and it's like, wow, I fought through. I basically beat myself. Blood, sweat, and tears. You know, I defeated myself. I defeated the monster inside of me in order to complete it. And that feeling is always just, it's just a remarkable feeling. It's amazing. I agree. Yes, it is. For sure. And so I want to ask you the same question as okay. well. What do you want your readers to take away from beyond poetry when they read it? I want them to take away, uh, first of all, I do want to say that the book is a, is a 90s theme. It takes place in 1995, so there's a throwback feel to it. Okay. A lot of the elements in the story, I, the, some of the different props in the story, I talk about cars. Um, when I was a little boy, my mother owned a Buick Skylark. That's nice. old, yeah, that's a, yeah. you know, um, I talk about some of the different shoe brands and some of the different music that what was, was going on. What were the shoe brands that was your favorite back in the day? I had a pair of, uh, 
I had two pairs of them. I had a pair of K Swiss. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> yeah. Those the classic. We had Reeboks, all of that. So classic. I talk about a lot of those things in the book to try to take the readers back to that time. Mm -hmm. And like, man, what was I doing in '95? What was I doing in '94? So. Good job. Yes, thank you. Very, very that. relatable for sure. Um, so, are you self-published, or did you use a publishing company? I'm actually self-published. Okay. So I'm not with any traditional publisher. Okay. Yeah. So. What would you say your benefits or your experience with self-publishing has been? The, benef the, the big benefits with self-publishing is that you don't have a lot of the pressures and the demands and you, you don't sacrifice your creative freedom like you do sometimes when you are with a traditional publisher. Now, they do, you know, they can help get you out there a little bit more in the world as far as uh, marketing and things like that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to being an indie author, you control the majority of the rights. You, you, control, you control all the rights, actually. Um, and it's your book. It's your content. You know, you don't really share that with another company. You share it. You just, it's all you. So that's the big benefit with being an indie, indie author. I love that. Well said. Thank so you. I'm going to kind of put you on the spot a little bit. Okay. Um, how about you read me a passage, say from Junior, a passage. of the book? How Maybe about like a poem? A sentence. Yeah, a poem? let's do it. Let's hear it. Okay. So this one is really short. You ready? Yes. Okay. Fathers, let your world revolve around the sun. And mm. sun is spelled S-O-N. S okay. I thought you was going to say S-U-N. Okay. No, nope. yeah. Nope. yeah. Let me see what else we got here. I love it. Thank you. Everyone is not your friend. Mm -hmm. Your enemies will dress in disguise right before your very eyes if you don't soon realize that everyone is not your friend. That's deep. Really, really deep. I'm a story with no ending. I'm a poem with debatable clarity. I am asleep but conscious behind my own will. Wow. I am dead to everyone, including myself. Mm. I am a loss for words. I am speechless. I am beyond repair. I am a life taken for granted. I absolutely love that. Isn't that Thank powerful, you. you guys? Thank you. Give it up, for sure. <laughs> Let me give you one give more. me my book. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Read more? me one more. The latitude of my gratitude. Ooh. Is ocean wide, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic, you name it. Ooh. But to be Pacific, okay. I wish for my words to reach every corner of the world, touch every heart of every walking soul. That is my goal. Oh, wow. Yes. Give it here. You did uh, that. Yes. I give me my it. book and then give it here. Right, yes, that was awesome. Wasn't that awesome, Thank guys? Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely love that yeah. for sure. So... What advice do you have for an aspiring writer? The first and I think the most important thing is never quit on yourself. Don't quit on yourself. You can do this. Commit yourself to it. Um, come up with a plan. What do you want this book to be about? Is it going to be a fictional book? Is it a non-fictional book? Mm -hmm. But whatever, whatever it is, don't quit on yourself. That's the first thing. Have the self-belief. Have the confidence. Um, Commit yourself to it. Anything is possible. I love that. Um, as you were talking, one thought just entered my mind. Okay. Talk to an aspiring writer about support. Because I know when I started writing my book, when I published it, yes. you know, I wanted all my friends and family to support me. Yes. The majority of them did. But there was some doubt there on whether or not they would support me. So talk to aspiring writers about support. Support is tremendous. Um, my wife has been a tremendous support of my journey thus far, and I owe a lot of the glory and that's in Beyond Poetry to my wife. Amen. So um, the support is tremendous. You're going to need that. I heard you say earlier, you know, it takes a village. Yes, it, it does. does. It definitely um, does. You will get that sometimes, though, as far as support from others. That you, they may not be there, but you're still going to have to push your way through that. You're still going to have to commit yourself. You may have some family members that will totally get behind you and support you. You may not. You may have friends that will be in your team and your corner. They may not. But either way, you still have to push through that. I love and that. And sometimes the other thing, too, is, is that just because people don't always buy your book right away doesn't mean that they don't support you. That's true. You know, yeah, there's sometimes there are people. Exactly. And you have people that 
are on the sidelines that are still cheering you on. Maybe they didn't buy the book, but they're watching you on TV. That's Maybe they're not watching you on TV, but they're they're blowing up your IG saying, yo, I see you. Keep going. That's you know, you're doing point. a great job. So not necessarily getting upset saying, oh, why they not support me? People are supporting you. Right. But there's different ways. Exactly. So that's a great point exactly. that you made. Exactly. Because although, although they may not have purchased that book, you know, I know when I was going through the editing phase, I sent yes. it out to my family. Yes. They helped you know, look at it from a reader's perspective. So that's support. Yes. My family was tremendous yes. in terms of the support that they gave me. So that came in a different fashion. And then, like you said, someone just sharing your book or sharing your website exactly. on social media. So exactly. that, that's, that's paramount. Yes. That's definitely paramount. Um, one last thing, mm -hmm. since your book is based on a mixture of experiences and well as, as well as poetry, what advice would you have for Little Junior in your book? I would say to Little Junior um, to just continue to write mm -hmm. and continue to build your own narrative. Um, you don't have to be like other kids. You can be yourself. You can use the, the gift that you have to elevate yourself to whatever it is you want to be in your life. That's the advice that I would give to Junior. I love that. That's powerful. Thank you. And then tell everybody where they can purchase your book. I know you're on Amazon, but you're also, let me not tell them. You tell them. <laughs> I was getting ready to tell them for you. No, it's all good. <laughs> so no, I'm on Amazon. I'm on Barnes and Noble. Um, I'm in a uh, few Barnes and Noble stores here in the DMV. Um, but if you want to get a signed copy of the book, I would recommend you go to my website, which is natejreads.com. I love that. Um, it comes directly to me. I sign it. You get a free bookmark, thank you card, and I send it right to you. One more time for your website. www.natejreads.com. And also all my uh, Instagram, Facebook, and everything is there. That's like my main hub is my website. Okay. Natejreads.com. Perfect. And I was going to ask you the last thing, your social media handles. Yes. So my Instagram, and I'm on that usually more, is uh, author.natej. Okay. And then I do have Facebook, which is uh, I am Nate J. I am Nate J. Thank you so much. Thank you. It Thanks has for having been me. a pleasure, yes. poet. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Give it up uh, for him, guys. Uh, We're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be back shortly. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. Thank that you was so awesome. much. Do you or anyone you know have a business or a brand you want to promote? Would you like to be a guest or be a part of our studio audience? If so, contact us at theshellyroyshow at gmail.com or contact us on Instagram at theshellyroyshow. Can't wait to hear from you guys. Welcome back to the Shelly Roy Show. I am your host, Shelly Roy, and my next guest is the founder and CEO of the Naked Face Cosmetics. You guys help me welcome Miss Tracy Rucard. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you, <laughs> you are so pretty. Like, I'm just loving your whole outfit <laughs> the suit, the makeup, Thank everything. You. Thank you. Absolutely gorgeous. So let's get into it. Okay. Tell everybody who Tracy Rucard is and what's your story. 
Ooh, Tracy Rickard. Tracy Rickard is uh, an entrepreneur. Yes. She is a U.S. Army veteran. Give it up, you guys. Thank you for your service. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, she is an IT professional as well as um, a respiratory therapist. Wow. Multifaceted. I love it. I love it. Got to hit it at every you, angle. You definitely do. <laughs> you definitely have to have multiple strings for mm -hmm. sure. Yes. And so you're here to promote the Naked Face Cosmetics. Yes, ma'am. Tell me a little bit about your company and the products that you have. I know you have a little bit of everything from skincare, body scrubs, you have the chewy mask. So talk to me a little bit about your products. Okay, so uh, so there's two different brands there. So you do have the Naked Face, and then mm -hmm. you have, as you mentioned, the Choosy Mask. The Naked Face, uh, there's uh, right now we have three products we plan, plan on expanding, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that yes. in, in a few. But uh, it came about, I heard you mention that you love the sun, right? Oh, my God, I do. Oh. <laughs> Probably a little Shelley, too much. <laughs> let me tell you, the sun is the reason, kind of, sort of, I'm sitting here, right? Because yeah. I love the sun. Love you too? Piece. Love it. Okay? Oh, my God. And so, uh, but what I'm one of these people who would go lay out on the beach and whatnot with, uh, you know, I got the SPF no 2 screen. and SPF yes. 4, oh my you God. know, like that, right? I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> no, Me too. Oh, boy, didn't I? Me too. It's called hyperpigmentation. Yes. So that's... Uh, that hyperpigmentation is what caused me, sent me to the dermatologist. And ah. uh, yes, yes. And so uh, when it started to pop up, I said, my dermatologist's name is Ann. I said, Ann, what is going on here? I mean, how do we get rid of this? Right. This is, has to go. Right. And she, she said, Tracy, you have to exfoliate. I said, okay, well, tell me what to get. You know, she says, yeah, yeah, you need to exfoliate, exfoliate like twice a day. You go, you know. And I said, okay, what, what do I buy? And she says, and oh, so no, no, before no. you go there, perfect segue, yes. explain to us what exfoliate means and what the benefits of it is, because that's important. Yes, yes, exfoliating is basically you are, you, it's a deep cleanse, and mm -hmm. you're, you're taking off, right? so you're the helping to shed the dead skin, the okay. top layer of the skin, that's basically it, because, you know, that skin can clog, it can get dark, mm -hmm. and so forth, so you exfoliate, and it, it uh, helps to shed that, 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 that dead skin off. Okay, yeah. so how often should you exfoliate? And the reason I ask is because I'm a little guilty because I think I over exfoliate right. or sometimes it depends on how I'm feeling. Right. So how often should you exfoliate? Well, I think it depends upon you and your, and your skin. Okay. Uh, I, th my dermatologist wanted me to exfoliate twice a day. I, I thought that was kind of oh, wow. excessive. I said, what do you mean twice a day? <laughs> you know, every day, every day. Oh, and wow. I said, yeah. really? I said, okay. So I'm not saying that you should exfoliate twice a day. I think it depends upon you, but here's a big deal. It depends upon what you're exfoliating with. There are certain products, uh, like salt products, for example, are, are a little bit more coarser. Mm -hmm. uh, there are things that I wouldn't necessarily use every day, maybe okay. a couple of times a week, something to that effect. But what I came up with, because Ann told me this, is I came up with a formula for our scrubs that you can actually use twice a day. Uh, it's just that gentle. There so, you go. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You can use it for your face and body. I'm a big fan of using one product for all of it. I love that. Yes. That's important. Yes, yes. So from that, that's basically how I came up with the first product because I went back. I said, well, Ann, give me the, tell me, you know, what do, what do I do with this? I mean, tell me what to buy. No, Tracy, you, you, you can make that. I said, I said, wow. did you say make it? <laughs> and she said, yes, make your own. Make your own. Yeah, so about a year later, uh, with the help of a dermatologist and an esthetician, uh, came up with a product, and that really worked for me. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And what you're saying is actually true because most um, entrepreneurs or business, it, well, not well, entrepreneurs as a whole that I know that are in business for themselves, they either wound up going into business because it was something or a product that they wanted or tried that didn't meet their needs. And so from there, they decided to do their own thing, which is what you did. Yes. And so in actually working with the dermatologist and the other folks on your team, did you, what was that process like? Did you actually start testing things yourself in your kitchen and then kind of working with the team saying, this kind of worked, that didn't work, like. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's exactly what I did. I went, I said, okay, let's see, what are we going to mix up here? So I basically came up with a mixture of uh, coffee, uh, honey, raw, unrefined uh, honey. Okay. Everything is all yeah. natural. I wanted something that had no chemicals in it. I wanted something that... Um, you know, a lot of the things that you look at nowadays, you go behind the counters and you can't, you can't pronounce what's in there. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. and some of them are toxic substances yes. um, that they actually sell. So I said, you know what, let me, if I'm going to do this, and let me, because this, this is all purely selfish at first. I mm -hmm. really, all those products really were geared towards me. Right. However, uh, I also, well, I'll tell you that in a second. Um, so I came up with this, with finally a really good mixture raw, unrefined shea, shea butter. Mm -hmm. So all of our products are shea butter uh, based for the most part. And uh, again, there's nothing in them that you can't pronounce. You have vitamin E and you just are feeling fabulous Simple, when you finish. something that you can yes, relate to yes. and identify with. Yes, 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 yes. Not needing a dictionary for Can't, don't, need no dictionary. <laughs> no dictionary needed. Exactly. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. So in addition to your face and your body scrub, mm -hmm. And we have to talk about the choosy mask, okay. but I'm going to save that okay. for later. All right. What would you say is your most popular product and why? I Outside, would, in addition to the choosy mask. I would, t it, it's, it, honestly, it's neck and neck. I actually literally have equal audiences for, or equal Because customers. they do different things, so that's fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. have, um, I have extremely dry hair. So that's the third product that I, uh, that I came up with was, uh, you know, a hair cream. Why? Because I have to oil my scalp and I have to oil my hair. And the products that you see, well, that I, that I was, you know, used to using, they're very greasy. Mm -hmm. And so, once That's again, true. look at the back of that. I bet you can't pronounce what's mostly in there. Oh, so I goodness. said, hmm, let me, uh, let's see what we can do. So once again, I went to work <laughs> and came up with a really good mixture mm -hmm. of coconut oil, unrefined shea butter, castor oil, black seed oil, um, clove, All peppermint. All things that I've heard of. All fabulous. <laughs> and so, so uh, you know, and then you can use it daily. Um, all of these products actually can be used. It doesn't matter what, uh, what, what ethnic you are. It doesn't matter what type of skin That's or hair you point. have. Yeah. Uh, they were not necessarily designed for, you know, one type of uh, skin or one type of hair. For example, the hair mask for those who wash their hair every day and so forth, and they have that type of a hair, mm -hmm. they, can use a hair they can use the hair cream, excuse me, as a mask instead of what I do with it, which is oil my scalp oh, and so yeah. forth. Okay. And it works fabulous for them, according to their testimonies. I so, love that. So what would you recommend for someone like myself, since I'm bald mm -hmm. with the scalp? You so you still have to be able to put back the oils and the nutrients back into your scalp. So yeah. is there anything that you could rec recommend for myself or someone else that's bald? Absolutely. You take a small amount and you, you rub it in your hands and whatnot and you smooth it all over that beautiful head. And let me tell you, you're going to love it. You're going to feel good. Perfect. You're going to absolutely love it. Yes. Now, is that something that I could do directly after shaving or would you recommend a day after or? No, you can do it directly after shaving. Okay. Yeah, you can do it after shaving, and a little dab will do you. So okay. you don't you don't need a whole a whole lot. And that was another thing that was important. Some of these, some products, are, you know, you kind of got to use a lot of it. You right. Know? So you to get, get your, the desired result. Yeah. So it's it's you know you get your bang for your buck because again a dab will do you, and that's what all of them from the uh, from the uh, face and body cream. The face and body cream is very interesting also because it has ingredients that you don't see a lot of, like prickly okay. pear oil, frankincense. Uh, oil, mm -hmm. rose hip oil, mm -hmm. almond oil, uh, it, again with a with a shea butter uh, base, and a lot of it has to do with uh, trust me with trial and error. A lot of it has to do with the mix. How do you mix this? You, how, how do you how do you formulate it? Okay. So it's a little bit more than just the ingredients and whatnot. So I'm telling you, Shelly, it took me a minute to come up with this stuff, and I. You know, but that's I, what I love about it. You have to take your time to master it. Yes. You know what I mean, so that it will be. Perfect, and that it gives you the result that you're looking for. So, yes. I'm definitely going to try it. Especially, I, I find myself now not wearing makeup as much, and I just use a little bit of vitamin E oil and coconut oil mm -hmm. just to wear on my face. So I'm going to try the the actual face cream mm -hmm. oh, and use it. it as a moisturizer. Yes, I'm going to do that myself. 
Well, you're going to absolutely love it. And uh, in addition oh, to Oh, they that, all smell really good. So I, I got my stuff in the mail. So thank you so much. So, you're, yes. You're very welcome. And the other thing with that is we are actually starting to expand that line now. So let me tell you, speaking Perfect. of the, the hair cream that we're talking about, mm -hmm. so some of the ladies were giving the hair cream to their men, and they put it in their beards. And I said, oh, is that you what we're doing? You hear that, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so all of you guys who are trying to get the Rick Ross look, <laughs> you guys make sure you get this face cream. Oh, no, no. I got something for the guys because of that. That okay. that prompted me to start a whole men's line. Because they're like, me too. What about me? Yeah, yeah. I you don't have to use that in your beard. If you want to use that, then all well good. But I got I a whole... That. Yes, I have a whole men's line that's about to debut during DC Fashion Week, I which is the that. last week of September. So I have a fabulous beard cream for the gentlemen, and they're gonna love it. You and guys then, be on the lookout, for sure. Yes, and it has its own name. It's by the Naked Face, but that's called Man Pretty. P-R-I-D-D-Y, Man Pretty. Man Pretty. Yes, ma'am. Pretty. Yes. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yes. Absolutely love it. So talk to me a little bit about the Choosy Mask. Do you have it here? I do. Sample? I, I, have a, I have a Choosy Mask here. So when I got mine, if I can tell you, I interpreted it how I wanted to interpret it. I was calling it the Chewy Mask <laughs> because I could open that flap, yes. drink, and chew. So hold that up so everybody can see. This is the Choosy Mask. This is the Choosy Mask. Isn't that super dope? Yes, it has its own flap here, and so basically, the reason I came up with this is because you're in the airports and oh everywhere God. you have to still wear your mask and whatnot, but uh, a lot of places, you know, you can take your mask off and you can eat. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, hmm, wouldn't this be interesting to have a mask that I could just pull the flap Open back it up. and I could just eat, drink, or whatever Perfect. I'm doing with the mouth and whatnot, and then I can close it back. And then it still provides you with some level of protection for your nose. Absolutely. And so, you know, so we call this the, uh, the choosy mask. So, yep, you can eat, I drink, whatever you do with your mouth. Yes. love that. If you're a coach, you can put your whistle in your mouth and <laughs> blow the whistle and put it, close it right it's back. It's multifunctional. <laughs> yes. Multifunctional, which I absolutely love. Yes. And it's easy to wash yes yes this is as well it is very durable easy to wash it has adjustable uh, ear straps so uh, I love it, it's that. a very cool mask now you know what you've spoiled me with that so are you going to come out with some other colors i have two colors because <laughs> i'm wearing this blue bag so. <laughs> i have a black one so uh it's possible it's possible i can um the reason why i started off with the blue and the black is because you know when people eat and, you know, if they start That's spilling true. stuff, they're not mm -hmm. going to want to walk around with the stain on the white mask or, <laughs> or the color mask. It definitely masks yes. as well. So that's the whole reason I figured, you know, you can't go wrong with navy blue or and black. black. No, you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. No, I yeah. completely agree. Yes. So tell me a little bit about what your success habits are, being a multipreneur. What are my success habits? Mm -hmm. hmm, that's interesting. Success habits, I read a lot. Number one, I read a lot. I think a lot. I look at what's going around me a mm -hmm. lot. Why? Because that contributes to to the whole to my entire success. Absolutely. You have to be aware of what's what uh, happening, want. what people want, mm -hmm. what people are doing. Mm -hmm. um, hence, again, like the choosy mask, for example, I was aware that we still have to wear these masks. Airports are mandated, and so mm -hmm. forth. So I'm I'm consistently looking, reading, learning from from whatever is happening out there. So that's, that's important. a big one for me. Yes. You definitely have to educate yourself, like you said. Absolutely. And really understand mm -hmm. what's going on, yes. so to speak. So that's good. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you have for aspiring entrepreneurs? Stay the course. Stay the course and don't be afraid of it. you got to go out there and step out. If you do nothing, you get nothing. And so if you're the person who has that idea in their mind and it's like, you know, what do I do? Should I do? And so forth. I'm afraid to go out there and do it. You can't be afraid. Get fearless. That's what you do. I and love you go that. out there and you keep it marching and you don't worry about, I heard the, uh, uh, one, your previous guest talk about, uh, you know, just basically you, you, you can't be afraid of it. You just have to go out there and do it, take it by the handles and everybody is not always going to be in your corner. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't matter because it's about you and what you're trying to do. And you just have to keep it moving. 
and, uh, and, and believe in yourself. And so regardless as to who else believes in you or who else doesn't, it, it really doesn't matter. It's about you and what you feel. And again, it's about if you do nothing, you get nothing. You We're not talking nothing. about everybody else. Everybody else. Absolutely. No, that's, that's great advice. And, and I have to second that and add to that. You definitely have to stay the course. Mm -hmm. Like you said, definitely believe in yourself and also know that your vision is not going to be well perceived by others. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that's what kind of trips us up sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, we go to share the excitement of our vision to someone else and because they don't quite get it, right. you know, it could be that they can't see as far as you can see. You know, it's not for everybody. Right. So, but I also tell people you have to celebrate your wins. Yes. Even if they're little, yes. you have to celebrate the small wins. Yes. And I also tell people you just got to keep going. Absolutely. You know what I mean? As long as you don't quit, you just have to keep going. So I think that's key. Absolutely. Well, it's always going to be a challenge. There's always Absolutely. going to be something. You just know that it's going to happen. Absolutely. You know, I can I can tell you story after story since we've started the Naked Face is just that the, the oh, blocks yeah. that, that, that come up. Uh, I can A quick one right now is, for example, supply chain. Mm. Oh, it's a nightmare with this, uh, with this whole imagine. COVID thing. Oh, but you can, you don't stop with what the you delays do. and yeah. having to find a new vendor at the last minute. Of it course. makes me work around it and figure out what else am I going to do if that doesn't happen. It's all about uh, uh, having a, a mitigation. You Absolutely. mitigate it. Yeah. Here's what the risk is, and mm -hmm. then you take that risk and you mitigate it, and you come up with a different way to get it done. Absolutely. So, so yeah. Well said. No, well said. Um, so tell everybody what your website is, where they can go get the choosy mask, and where they can go get. Uh, the cosmetics. So the naked face, uh, the naked face is the naked face dot store. So we've naked chosen that store. Yes, okay. it's easy to remember the naked face dot store. And then our Facebook is the naked face store. Okay. Our Instagram is naked face cosmetics. Okay. And on, and then you have the choosy mask dot com. So we're okay. in the midst of, and you can shop on Instagram on at the URL, and that's also where you can find the uh, the, the choosy mask. The Perfect. choosy mask is mixed Perfect. in there. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. been such a pleasure. Thank you so much, you guys. You guys has have been a great audience. I want to thank you to all of my guests, Miss Brandy Forte, Mr. Nathan Jarrell, and last but not least, Miss Tracy Ruport. I want to thank everybody for continuing to support me. You guys have a great night. <laughs>or anyone you know have a business or a brand you want to promote? Would you like to be a guest or be a part of our studio audience? If so, contact us at the Shelly Roy Show at gmail.com or contact us on Instagram at the Shelly Roy Show. Can't wait to hear from you guys.